Well, leaders from Africa's two largest economies, South Africa and Nigeria, meet in South Africa, and this in an effort to strengthen business ties between the two countries. CNBC Africa's Godfrey Matizwa caught up with the chairman of Sky Bank, Olotando Ayeni, for more. If you look at the history of most of the African countries, democracy took time before we got to where we are. So a lot of the government, because of the illegitimate issue, they probably did not relax rules that could allow people to move freely. But now this is a new dawn in the continent. And uh, if you look at the size of the continent, the two biggest economies in the continent is Nigeria and South Africa. And they have to drive that process to ensure that the, this is the, the century for the continent is realized. Right. Yeah. What is the problem, do you think? Is it the politicians or is it actually the people themselves? Do Nigerians not like South Africans to come into their economy and vice versa? No, I do not think it's the people themselves. We love ourselves, I believe. I love South Africans. And I, I feel the same way with some of my friends from South Africa. But I think the enabling environment has not been provided by government for us to be able to take full advantage of our potentials. Uh, outside, for instance, the issues that has to do with uh, visa, for instance. Uh, I mean, for a Nigerian going to the UK, you have, for instance, 10 years uh, multiple visa entry. Yeah. Uh, going to France, you have five year multiple visa entry. Uh, but coming to South Africa, you probably have only two or three years. So in some cases, they've given people with genuine business interests in South Africa six months. And if you look at the situation of Nigeria too, it, to, act, to be able to obtain Nigerian visa is extremely difficult. So. For me, I do not see the reason why this government cannot understand that these people are brothers. We want to do business. We want to relate with ourselves. Create the laws that will allow us to move freely within ourselves. If a British coming to South Africa does not require a visa to come into South Africa, tell me any good reason why a Nigerian requires a visa to come to South Africa. Or at the best still, let those visas be obtained at the port of entry yeah. when you can clarify the purpose of the visit, yeah. give the visa at the port of entry. Yeah. As a businessman and somebody who controls a financial institution, for instance, I do not have the luxury of having to leave my passport in an embassy for 10, 15 days for them to process, have to come back to their home government. I, I don't have that luxury because I move around. Yeah. So I, they need to move with the reality of the times. Our peoples have, we have crossed the barrier of segregation let them encourage us to come together yeah so the governments must listen let's talk about what you're doing inside nigeria now we had that big consolidation that took place with the help of the central bank do you see opportunity within the nigerian banking sector now for further consolidation to try to make sure that this growth that we're seeing is at least harnessed by local banks not the big dominant foreign banks well for me there's always an opportunity anytime there's any policy in government that is created. In 2005, the CBN, there was an induced consolidation so that uh, we can do bigger transactions. Uh, and that afforded uh, a situation where you have the balance sheet of some banks that were less than maybe 10 billion, now running to trillions, less than 10 years after consolidation. So for me, they have created a good ground for banks to grow at an at non astronomical rate. Uh, the same thing, when you look at that then, it was an induced consolidation. But going forward now, businesses have to come together to take maximum advantage of the environment. And I see a situation where uh, the capacity to do further come together by local banks, even within the African sub-region, even within the Nigerian sub-sector, yeah. the opportunity is among us. Uh, I see a situation where there will be further come together yeah. uh, to be able to at least book bigger and longer term tenor yeah. transactions. Has that experiment worked, do you think, where they try to separate uh, the two main divisions between the banks? I, I, do, not, I do not think they try to separate it because uh, it, you, your capacity to borrow depends on your, on your balance Balanced. sheet and your shareholders fund. Yeah. So it's not, an, it's not a forced separation. Uh, you, you can only do transactions in which you have the capacity to do. So, and if you, for instance, look at uh, funding for infrastructure, these are long-term funding. Uh, the such funding at an when you are when you are when you have an interest rate of about 20-25 percent, it's difficult 
to fund a transaction that will maybe take about five, ten years to, to for maturity. So you really can't separate those two divisions. It's I mean, you need to keep the two together. It is difficult to separate. You have to keep them together. Would you look at South Africa as an investment destination? And we, I know you've been uh, talking about the fact that we have got foreign exchange controls here in South Africa. Would you look at South Africa? Would you come here before those were relaxed? Well, for me, a lot of companies have tried to come to South Africa uh, without taking time to study the uh, uh, control regulations in terms of the currency uh, control regulations. Uh, it was until they were here, yeah. you can bring in any money, yeah. but you cannot take them out. And that is one thing South Africa must look at. Uh, if you have to be able to, you have to create the opportunity for me to take my part of my profit yeah. back home. Yeah. So I think they need to look at that point. Specifically, for instance, like banking, the, the, the rules are too stringent. And that is, I see no reason why in a, we should have banks in Europe, we should have branches in uh, the Middle East, we should have uh, opportunities in, uh, in, in America. And back at the back door of our yeah. home here in South yeah. Africa, it's impossible to open a shop here. Yeah. I was going to rephrase the question and say, is there room in South Africa for an African-owned bank outside from South Africa itself? Uh, it's, not, it's not written. But uh, the regulations are just too, uh, ju just impossible to, to overcome. And I think the, the government got to look at it and take advantage of the fact that uh, uh, the world is changing. And, and I think uh, if you look at the history of South Africa, coming from where they are coming from, uh, in order for us to be able to integrate uh, and, and, and be able to create a partnership with our brothers that are here, it is to the interest, especially when you want, when you are doing the empowerment program for the blacks in South Africa. We want to be part of it. We want to bring business here. And you know, our first point of call will be those who were denied those opportunities, who are hungry for transactions. So it is, apart from the fact that it, the bottom line of South Africa will be enhanced, our brothers who were practically denied here, it will be another.